Cuphead is back. After a long wait, we're ready for the Cuphead show season two, and it's got plenty of hidden references to other media and nods to classic tropes. Buckle up, Cuphead fans, because we've got a wild ride ahead of us. What do you say? We're in! <laughs> Number one. There was one trope that was used a few different times in this season that you almost certainly picked up on. Cuphead is a cartoon that loves to pay homage to other cartoons. It is largely based on the golden age of animation, which means that they make many nods to animated features from the 20s and 30s. One that you certainly notice is their repeated use of the eyes in the dark trope. That's right, Ding Dong. This visual trope shows nothing but two floating eyeballs on a black screen to indicate that a character is hiding in the dark. Variations of this particular image have been used in different animated features for decades. Since Cuphead is very much an ode to animation, it's no surprise that they use this classic detail. Number 2. In Episode 3, the characters keep referring to Medusa as a sea beast. Reddit sea beast? Sure, this could just be a literal description of what she is, but we have a feeling that this goes a bit deeper than that. About as deep as the deep blue sea itself. Season 2 of The Cuphead Show is the newest product of Netflix animation. Another recent product of Netflix animation was its popular movie, The Sea Beast. Perhaps mentioning sea beasts in The Cuphead Show was Netflix animation's cheeky way of referencing its other recent hit. Number 3. Speaking of classic cartoons, the entire first episode of Season 2 seems like it may be a Looney Tunes reference. Pretty much! <laughs> This episode has many callbacks to the Merry Melodies cartoon, Bars and Stripes Forever. This cartoon, like this episode, is also all about characters attempting to escape prison. If you watch this short right after watching the episode, you'll likely be struck by how similar these two cartoons look. Even the way the characters sleep on their beds in prison makes it very clear that this isn't just a coincidence. This episode definitely drew some inspiration from this short. So we're getting out of here. You mean it? Yeah. Number 4. As for another very recognizable Looney Tunes reference, the second episode of the Cuphead Show's second season is titled Rats All, Folks. This is a clear reference to That's All, Folks. Yeah, that's All, Folks. Porky Pig's classic closing line at the end of Looney Tunes cartoons. Interestingly, though, while the title is a play on the episode's storyline that focuses on a rat, Rats All, Folks isn't the season finale. Number 5. We've all heard the phrase armed and dangerous, so we surely all caught that the episode titled Charmed and Dangerous was a play on this phrase. Oh, how delightfully charming. While this could simply be a reference to that famous phrase, we think it's probably also a nod to the 1986 film Armed and Dangerous. The comedy, starring John Candy and Eugene Levy, plays a lot like a goofy buddy cop comedy, and Cuphead and Mugman make the Cuphead show feel the same way. <laughs> Looks like it worked. Yeah, he's charmed, all right. Number 6. The Cuphead show's fourth episode has yet another nod to classic animation. Cuphead and Mugman find themselves strapped to a rocket like in the famous trope. We've all seen this happen to plenty of animated characters, particularly those that were featured in older films and TV series. Number 7. When Mugman is having a fantasy all about being a great pirate captain, he gives himself a nickname that is definitely a reference. The Great Captain Mugbeard. When Mugman calls himself Captain Mugbeard, he's referencing Blackbeard, the famous pirate. Number 8. What's the first rule of Fight Club? You do not talk about Fight Club. Even if you're not a fan of the classic 1999 film, you probably still know that the number one rule of Fight Club is that you don't talk about Fight Club. So it was hard to miss this reference when the Baroness said rule number one. Tell no one about Sugarland. Sugarland is a little less scary than Fight Club, but only a little. Number nine. Did you recognize these hands from anywhere? Cuphead loves to pay homage to classic cartoons, and what's a more classic cartoon than Mickey Mouse? Everyone in the Cuphead show has hands that look a lot like Mickey's famous gloves. While we immediately think of Mickey Mouse when we see these very specific gloves, these gloves are actually called Toon Gloves, and they're worn by way more characters than just everyone's favorite mouse. No one quite knows why classic cartoon characters sport the iconic gloves, but it's very fitting that the characters in the Cuphead universe wear them since these gloves originated in cartoons from the 1930s, aka the golden age of animation. Number 10. Mugman mentions that he is a member of the Cup Scouts. I was the most decorated Cup Scout in my troop. 
This is clearly a play on Cub Scouts, but this version is for dishware instead of kids. Number 11. In the season finale, Cuphead is reading Adventure Comics. While the spelling is ever so slightly different, this choice in reading material is a play on Adventure Comics. This is a very popular DC comic book series that ran from 1938 through 1983. Its early issues were just released during the era that the Cuphead show loves to celebrate. Number 12. In the same episode, Elder Kettle makes a very interesting comment about pain stars. Are those pain stars spinning around your heads? He references the pain stars around Cuphead and Mugman's heads. This visual trope, also known as circling birdies, is very common in older cartoons and used to indicate that a character has been knocked out or injured. It's noteworthy that Elder Kettle takes the trope and uses it to break the fourth wall and acknowledge that they are in a very self-referential cartoon. Number 13. This character, who's named Calamaria in the Cuphead game, was a pretty clear reference to that snake-haired monster we all know, even though they may not have actually called the mythological Gorgon by her name. With her hair made of live snakes paired with the ability to turn people to stone, this character is clearly a reference to another character who came before. 5,000 years before, to be exact. Hey, a very old reference is still a reference. Your name is Dinner. Actually, my name is... Number 14. You may also have recognized the song Cala Maria performed. If so, it's probably because you've actually heard it before. Her song has the same instrumental as Habanera, the aria from the opera Carmen. The fact that this is a very famous aria is enough of a reason for the show to make a reference to it. But the two characters also have a lot in common. Habanera is a cheeky song that Carmen sings in response to a group of men who are asking them to love her. She talks about the lawlessness and unpredictability of love and basically doesn't make her wannabe suitors any promises. We can definitely see the similarities between that and the plight of this mermaid who seems to have the men in the episode wrapped around her finger. It's cause I love ya, baby! Don't call me baby. Number 15. Mugman must be a musical theater fan. He's reading Romance on the High Seas. This isn't just a made-up book. It's actually a reference to the 1948 movie musical of the same name that just so happened to be Doris Day's debut film. Number 16. Episode 8 has another important musical moment. The very recognizable classical song Yanwari Ira plays repeatedly every time Cuphead and Mugman are running. This song has been used in countless media, so this episode is very likely referencing all of these high-intensity movie moments we've seen before. Did you spot all of these references? What did you notice in the Cuphead show season 2 that we missed? Tell us all about it in the comments, and if you love this video, like and subscribe to The Things Animated for all the latest on your favorite animated series and movies. Oh, and uh, tell us. Yeah? Bam.